Here's your hosts, The League Dad, Kevin, Mitchell, and Alistair. What's up, gamers, and welcome to another episode of the All In Podcast. I am The League Dad, and joined by my friends, my co-hosts, the boys. We've got Kevin, Mitchell, and Alistair. Thank you so much for being here. Uh, excited to get this this party started because Worlds is about to start. Finally, we've had a couple weeks off, but uh, still no shortage of, of news around uh, the league. But uh, I, I can feel the anticipation. I am ready for uh, this Worlds to begin. But uh, before we jump into that, give us an update, guys. How's life treating y'all? How's how's everything going? Tickets sucked. Uh, Oof, we'll yeah. get into it later, but you know we missed the first chance here for Worlds tickets for the MasterCard presale. So I'm going to keep going for that. Otherwise, I'm looking forward to Worlds. It's in two days, so it's going to be so exciting. It's going to be in human hours, finally. Yes. Uh, I, I Week's been pretty casual, aside from uh, today, actually. I just got back from a uh, talk. Like My school is hosting Neil deGrasse Tyson um, oh, to cool. about his oh, cool. new book. So I was there for about an hour and a half. That was really interesting. Nice. Wow, Mr. Tyson, that's pretty cool. Um, got, I have I got his new book for free. It's signed and everything. So it's nice, well, that's sweet, cool. Hey, save that. Don't sell it until like five years in the future or something, and then it'll be like a million bucks. That's cool. <laughs> yeah, I also tried to buy tickets. Did not work out. Uh, but I did go to the fair this weekend. That was cool. I was having such a great week until this morning when I tried to buy tickets. <laughs> so. Yeah, um, yeah. <laughs> for those uh, well, for, okay. <laughs> for those listening, uh, I this morning, all I hear is doo -doo 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 -doo. I hear all these disc Discord messages going off. I'm like, what is happening? There must be some kind of emergency going on. And all I see is Kevin and Mitchell <laughs> complaining about how they cannot get tickets even for the presale. Uh, and you guys weren't alone. I linked you guys that Reddit thread. It seemed like that was a problem for a lot of people. I don't know what's going on there, whether there be bots or something, but uh, yeah, it sucks that you guys were having such a hard time getting it. I, I know you still have chances to get it, uh, but if it's any indication today, hopefully it doesn't, uh, it's not as chaotic for you guys when you actually try to buy, you know, tickets yeah, for a I mean, sale. I'm just going to be honest, like just the way the system is set up, like the tickets apparently like, okay, so. A Reddit commenter said that he had a riot connection. This is all just hearsay, right? But okay, let's just yeah. go with it anyway. Let's do it. Yeah. That within within 30 seconds of the tickets being on sale, they all got sold out. So there was literally no chance for any actual human to get it, I'm pretty sure. I think wow. in 30 seconds, all the bots were already in queue and already had just bought in all the tickets ASAP. And if you were lucky enough to like be early enough to queue to see to like see the buy ticket screen like Kevin was – if you didn't make your purchase and within less than like 30 seconds, you didn't get it. So Man. pretty big bummer. It's a big problem. It doesn't seem like there has been a report of any single human being that got a world's finals ticket from Ticketmaster, mm -hmm. the pre-sale. And I don't want to be a downer. I think it's just realistic though. Cause this happens with all the big events in the world, I guess. Um, I don't think any human's going to get a general admission ticket this Thursday either. Like oh, man. There, there might be a few lucky people who do get one. Um, but I mean, this is the biggest international event in one of the biggest cities in San Francisco. I, I think that if you want to go to worlds 99% chance, you have to buy a resale ticket, uh, which is going to be about maybe five to like 10 times the cost. That's, that's, that's <laughs> so, terrible. Like I, I'm kind yeah. of sad that like at this day and age, like I know, you know, bots and people can program stuff, but man, you would think, or I would hope that there would be some way, at least for future, uh, future events that that would be somehow stopped because it sucks like you should be able to buy tickets as a human being to buy tickets just like you know any other normal event so i don't know it's yeah i mean i agree it, it was a really dumb system because like you go in you 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 like get into queue right 15 minutes beforehand or whenever it opens up and it's like i think it's almost random what spot you're in queue but even if you get in like you would think that when they show you seats, like those are yours, but they're like, oh, someone else bought these. I'm like, why, why was I waiting in line? Why did you show these to me then? Yeah. I, I like clicked, them. Yeah. I clicked buy in like two seconds. I literally was like, okay, I found the button, I clicked it, and then there's like, no, someone took it. I was like, wow. Okay. <laughs> How? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that like, doesn't yeah. make they, sense. They don't hold the, the seats for you because honestly, Ticketmaster, they don't care as long as they sell them. I mean, I read, I was, I was reading a bunch of stuff throughout my day today, and then. Apparently, I mean, Ticketmaster, they probably just sell under the table directly to 
certain companies and parties like just like they sell your information they just sell tickets before they're actually even sold and they have this whole queue system and everything just as a facade bit of a tin tin foil hat conspiracy theory but honestly i don't like i don't think it's like that ridiculous because um bots have been around for years and years and years doing the same stuff yep the whole time i wouldn't be surprised that Ticketmaster looks at the numbers and is like we probably make more money this way so who yeah. cares <laughs> yeah and it's not just tickets yeah. like i know there are specific private discords that uh you know, do have bots for like when when new sneakers are released or where new collectible items are dropped or like say a new gaming console is out. Uh, you know, whatever that next valuable thing is to buy, like in a line, there's always going to yeah. be some kind of bot or some way to game the system. And I know that there's uh, groups that you know I'm not a part of any of them. I've just heard, by the way, but like I I only know this through third hand information. But I do know that they exist, and and for a lot of them, you have to kind of pay to be part of these groups. But uh, again, yeah. like you, you're like, I know firsthand that people like are able to buy like five PS fives when they dropped because they just knew where all like the locations were and the drops automatic. So all of that to say is that it sucks that it also affects our sport, you know, in, in worlds. Uh, but I, I hope they do something for now. Uh, I hope you guys can get tickets. I'm, I'm crossing my fingers for you. I'm, I'm sending good vibes over to I've, you. I've just completely abandoned hope. If I get tickets, I think it's great. I mean, I'm gonna be really happy, but I think <laughs> I have to be on the uh, yeah. on the safe side and be like, I'm probably not going. Set the bar low. You know? Set the bar low. <laughs> yeah, set the yeah. bar low. There you go. Because like, I didn't think it was gonna be this bad. I thought, you know, this stupid queue system that Ticketmaster created would actually yes. help us. It did not. Did yeah. Not. So, Kevin, you actually had a pretty good idea. I don't know if you want to talk about it. When grabs the tickets and like the client and stuff. Oh, I yeah. Uh, I mean, my idea was kind of just like there should be like a soft priority system where like it links to your league account which because you can link a lot of stuff to your league account it should just be like oh yeah you've been playing the game for this long or you care you played x True. amount of games right um and like obviously wouldn't give you the ticket immediately but at least it would give you a little bit more consideration because that way you like that's what you bought it an account has six thousand games played in 10 years or whatever like you can't make that shit up so yeah something like a soft system like that to at least like give you some semblance of hope because I agree. I mean, like at the end of the day, you can make money off this. So there's always going to be scalping happening. I was in it for GPUs two years ago. I didn't scalp, but like I was like hunting for one mm -hmm. forever. It sucks. But like at the end of the day, this system means that like real fans just like are sad and they don't actually get to go yep. attend. And sometimes like some of these tickets just go into the ether because not everyone wants to buy something marked up what whatever five x ten x in the yeah. thousands of dollars, right? It's just stupid. I'd rather yeah. just, at that point, I'd just rather watch on my stream. Yeah, and and one of the real fixes that is like so hard to actually do is that you just have to. We all have to collectively not buy the resale yep. tickets from Scott, yeah. and then people don't go to the event, and then then they will actually fix it. But since people do end up buying the resale tickets anyways, and they still go to the event, then the system just keeps going and perpetuating and stuff. So. Yep. Like if they're not, if Riot's not gonna do anything about it, or if Ticketmaster's not gonna do anything about it, then we have to not buy the resale tickets and just have a bunch of empty seats in the stadium. But that would never happen, really, though. Unfortunately, that would be a lot of yeah. rich people yes. who are coming over for just this game. Exactly. Yeah, literally, people are just being like, "Oh, it's just a one-time thing, right? Like, I'm just gonna buy these extra expensive tickets. I already bought my flights. I'm just." Yep. 800 bucks for nosebleeds. Screw it. <laughs> you yeah. know? One, one thing I can say, and it does sound a bit copium, but when my experience with buying the semifinals tickets, right, the pre-sale tickets all bought the first row, which are actually just bad seats. The yeah. closest row are actually just bad seats. So realistically, I mean, obviously the same thing could happen tomorrow, which would suck. Yeah. Um, I can't predict that, but it's actually better to be farther back because if you're up close, you're you're not going to be able to actually see their screens. You're looking at the the jumbotron at the middle of the stadium, so yeah. being at the front is bad. It just it just sucks. Yeah. It's yeah. Like I I didn't have like quote unquote great seats for pretty much any other event when I went to LCS in 2016, but I had pretty good seats for League. Hmm. So hopefully yeah. you guys can get those good. That's seats. some great copium right there. Yeah. So well, you're I mean, gonna it's, get it's yeah. half copium, but at true. the same time it is true. Like the yeah. the the quote unquote traditionally best seats aren't actually very good. Yeah. Yeah. Kevin, how were your they, seats in Chicago? Were they pretty good? They were great. They were like okay, um, center, middle, uh, 
I could see like the players and they were within viewing distance and we weren't on like no speed level, but we were on lower bowl. So nice. Big fan. It was like 110 bucks, which is, isn't cheap, but it was two days of games and we got one that went to game five and then one was a quick 3-0 and a handshake. So <laughs> it was I really, pretty wild. Yeah. I really want those seats where it's like next to the corridor, you know, where the players walk out. Yeah. And then mm. when they when they're showing the camera and they're panning by the players, you can kind of be like, "Hey, I'm in there." You know? I, I had the next best thing when I was uh, in 2016 because I was right near uh, the casters. That's cool. Ooh, that's pretty cool too. Yeah. yeah. So before everything started, I, had... I was talking with Riv. It was pretty cool. Oh, that's so cool. cool. Yeah, I always think it's funny too. Like, there's so many funny moments like in the past where like. You, there, the there's someone really loud next to the cat. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like I remember, there's this. Uh, it was like it was a uh, it was in World's Finals. I think it was like some Korean team versus it was like some Korean team versus another Korean team. And um, I think it was like Khan or Cube. Yeah, it was Cube in top lane. He was on Nar, and he was like one v one at least in, getting hit by everything but not dying. And there's some lady next to the cat going like, oh. <laughs> it was so funny. I love that. It's <laughs> like progressively freaking out louder and louder. Yeah. <laughs> and it was all caught on uh, on audio. That was good stuff. That's awesome. <laughs> yeah, that's pretty. That that's lady. pretty funny. I want to be that person yeah. too, just yeah. so I can <laughs> be heard and be like, "That was me." You heard that scream? Yeah. <laughs> that was me. That screamed like a girl. Famous. That was me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah uh all right so world's tickets hopefully you guys get them uh but here's here's the real thing which i couldn't believe a even really became like a thing on reddit and twitter but this huge debate about the world song is it hot or not is it hype or is it meh and like i i don't know like i feel like i guess i'm a little more giving when it comes to like the songs because we've had some really good world songs right it's going to be hard to top some of the songs we've had in the past let alone songs and the videos that go along with it the hype videos that we've had in the past have been so good yeah, so yeah. i will say for my thoughts just you know since i'm pre i'm pretty like surprised that this was even a thing like i think the song is fine i think it's good i think it's catchy i think it is pretty hype it could it have been more hype maybe but you know considering the standard that we have i think it's right on par i think there's definitely been world uh worst world songs so I, I'm actually uh, okay with it. I, I have heard the heavy metal cover. I know there's a couple, but this one by Trey on Reddit. And uh, I really like his metal covers because he did one for Giants too. And uh, it's really sick. I like how he interprets the songs. And it did, to me, it felt like it gave it a little more hype because it was like a metal version. Uh, so, yeah. But what did you guys think of, of the song? I will say, though, the video was not a fan. seemed like you could have cut and paste any song uh, with the video. I think the community kind of had that that right but uh yeah what I mean, do you all thought the case for a while too yeah for a while well yeah but i will say that at least some of the other videos to me at least looked better quality like with more thought kind of had a, a theme like uh almost felt like they were fighting towards something right like you were like okay it's like a mini movie i felt like this yeah. one was just like a collection of clips or something that they just did that didn't really have any cohesiveness but anyways yeah what did you guys think of the song and video overall yeah, uh, for the song, I do like that it was trying to do something different. It didn't sound like a typical world song, which in a sense is like cool that they tried it. Yeah. Sort of like a formulaic world song. I think that I saw some feedback on Reddit that was like, oh, not the lyrics weren't like inspiring enough. But like, I think the chorus was. I think that um, the main part made sense. And I think maybe, okay, the, the, the song lyrics in between the main chorus, yeah, I, okay, it was a little weird. But. I, I thought it generally sounded fine. I will say that it really reminded me of when Ignite by Zed was mm -hmm. a world song. Um, that got a lot of flack, but I actually thought that the live version that he did, where there was actually some more remixing and a little bit more elements added to the song, just really made it really full. So I'm going to kind of reserve judgment until I hear it live, because yeah. there might be a version that sounds better. The world's video did no, in no favors. Like I think Rise, for example, is one that I always think about. Um, I think Ambition was in Rise. And his like whole story, I thought that was just a sick animation, something I still remember yeah. to this day. And there was a couple other ones that were at least good, right? I think this one just like for for what we've seen with Arcane and just like Riot's animations in general, yeah. this was a little bit below par. It felt like they didn't collab True. with the um with Lil Nas at all. So yeah, I think it was generally decent and it's not my favorite kind of music, but I just don't listen to rap or his music much. So for that, to me it was fine. Not really rap. Yeah, it's like more like hip hop, but yeah. I mean, yeah, for me, I, See, I, I don't. I'm not at all. 
I personally don't care about the animation because I'm going to watch it once and never watch it again, so I, I just don't really care. Uh, the song itself, I mean, overall, I like it. Um, yeah. I like it. Now, my opinion on the song, however, is I think, it, I think it's a very good song, but I think necessarily as a world's anthem, it doesn't feel the same. Now, however, that doesn't mean it's a bad thing because pretty much every song, especially for the last like five, six years, has all been kind of the same formula. It's been slow build up, drop, mm-hmm. build up again, and then <laughs> drop. repeat the drop. It's, yeah. it's been the exact same song with different lyrics and different notes. Yeah. And overall, I, I'm a fan. And apparently I seem to be in the minority uh, with that. No, I'm with you. Yeah. I, I personally think like overall, I, I mean, I listen to it. I have it on my playlist. I, it's definitely enjoyable obviously i mean comparing it to rise isn't fair because rise is just so amazing like yeah. it's such a good song so i think i mean comparing it to rise is like it's i don't know it's not fair um yeah yes yeah, and that I'm, video was good too that's why it makes that whole hype well, everything about rise drama. was good yeah it was good yeah. yeah yeah that was good i uh i do actually really like the song in a meme way <laughs> Uh, in the very like first day when people were talking about the song, someone like posted on Twitter or Reddit or something. Uh-huh. Started listening to it at one point two five speeds, and I tried it, and I actually really like that version. Yeah, I love it on one point two five speeds. I gotta try that. I think it's pretty hype, and I think it's like pretty good. When I do listen to it on like normal volume or normal speed, I I kind of get a little bored. I don't know. It's um. It's okay. And then I can hear the lyrics too. And mm-hmm. the lyrics totally kind of make me cringe. Like, I mean, we're, we're not a riot Philly posse. I'm just going to say it. Like he says, like, like condom is bleeped out and it is so obvious that there's just a huge gap where it's bleeped out. I'm pretty sure the N word is bleeped out at a different spot too. And it's super obvious. Oh, back, back like, to back. It's back yeah. to back. Yeah. Back it's back to back. back. And I'm just like, ah, this is a really bad part of the song mm-hmm. where it's bleeped out. Um, so that was that one the speeding it up makes it less noticeable um i mean i like Lil nas x so i i do kind of think like i i don't know the song feels like it wasn't even made for like a world song it's like only barely about league really i don't yeah. know it, doesn't, it just seems like it's like a very generic like shoot for the stars like i'm never gonna give up sort of vibe um so it's like whatever uh i think it's it's just a it's a decent song um yeah i i think one of the things that i've been starting to hate the most is the fact that like we're focusing like the animation focuses on players that aren't even there and mm-hmm. i know that they plan out ahead like the animation like months and months and months ahead so like they had cordy j in there right and he didn't make it to world so it's a little <laughs> yeah. awkward they did it the same thing with like takeover for faker um where he didn't even go to worlds but they had him as the main character in the animation and rise did a totally different thing right and that's why everybody loves it is that Mm -hmm. they focused on the previous world's players even though like they didn't make it or something you could still just focus on last year's worlds and be like this is was a story of last year's worlds and now we're here versus like what's gonna happen let's try to predict it oh what are the characters that shown (laughs) on the screen the most isn't even here core jj i think it makes it really just like yeah, we don't care about the animation, but we all remember Rise because it was sick because it was about the year before his worlds. Um, so, yeah, I, I think we should start doing that because it's been like three years in a row. We've tried to predict who's going to go and we, we, we mess up the animation. Um, and then actually, I just realized in this very moment, I don't even remember last year's world song. I literally don't even remember who was in it, what it was called, how it went, nothing. I yeah. have no recollection at all. I actually did a, uh, I actually did like a playlist. I YouTubed it because, uh, I was letting my kids hear the world songs. <laughs> like, yeah, yeah. Uh, we listen and like, I, it had the ones in all the years. And yeah, last year's one, I was like, who, how, I don't even remember hearing this once. I was like, I have yeah, no yeah, clue. And I still don't remember. Yeah. Something like that. I mean, honestly, I think the most exciting thing is they teased a new champion in, uh, in, uh, the new song. Uh, I don't know. There's like this horse girl who's like a lance or something. Oh. No. oh, I see. No, that's that's just Hecarim's uh, skin. That's a Hecarim skin. Oh, it's a Hecarim yeah. skin? Yeah, yeah it's a Hecarim okay. skin. It's fine. Yeah, yeah. If you see it in bot lane, they're just trolling. Just report them. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I was going to say, though, I mean, they did predict it for 2019, the Rise, Re- Phoenix Rise song, and then oh, FPX yeah. won. So, yeah, you know. That's pretty sick. That was pretty sick. Know. 
I still think that's a weird ass conspiracy. What what is that shit? Heck yeah! Uh, how do you know that? <laughs> how do you how do you make that stuff up? You can't mm-hmm. even. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Uh, well, I mean, again, I I think it was good enough. Again, I don't know because we are spoiled with some really good ones in the past. Uh, that is tough. But I do think that there's a lot of room to make it hype in the live performance because, you know, I, I think that song just has a catchy hook. The words, at least for the hook or for the chorus, are like somewhat generic, like championship kind of deal. Uh, and I think maybe they can make it up in the live performance, make it really hype. Um, and hopefully it'll be be good by then. Yeah, but, I still um, hum the uh, the chorus. Yeah. You know? yeah, it's like it's a good mm-hmm. chorus. Mm-hmm. Yeah, exactly. It's good. It's catchy. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, all yeah, right. Catchy. Well, let's uh, let's talk a little bit more because Carlos resigned from G two. Uh, put up a, a video there, and I believe he was also forced to sell his ownership. Uh, yeah. to, to you know of G two as well. So again, we we talked about this last week. You know, you guys. I'm sure if you're listening, know the whole debacle with the whole Andrew Tate thing, him tweeting a picture and then defending himself. And then, you know, it becoming a whole thing where people really didn't like that about him. And then they lose their Valorant spot. Uh, And then that's like a big deal because that's a huge investment. And a lot of investors are not happy about that. Next thing you know, here we go. Here's the next piece is that Carlos is out, uh, had to sell his ownership. I, 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 I don't know. Like, I feel really bad for him. Like, I I know he did a dumb thing, but gosh, so many people in this sport, esport, have done really dumb things, right? Like, is that uh, is that event that one thing, man? Like, having to sell your ownership, you know, of a company that you built, um, like that just seems like such a harsh punishment for a mistake that many people make. And again, it's not like he did anything illegal or personal or you know, said anything of those, you know, those, those things that Andrew Tate does not like he says it, but still, I think, um, I just think it sucks, man, because he is part of that old school scene. He kind of helped build up, you know, or he did build up G2 and kind of build up LEC, uh, you know, indirectly with that. So what are your thoughts? I guess any, any more thoughts now that this has happened to him? I mean, like I said, for me, I just feel bad for the guy. I, I think it sucks. He made a mistake. He can be redeemed, but what a big price to pay. Uh, yeah, I mean, I'm actually a little surprised that's the take you started with because I was thought I was going to be putting the controversial takes out. Oh, there. really? In my mind, it's like at the end of the day, he didn't do it personally. I don't look up to that. I don't. I think he should like you know there is, should be a there should be some punishment. I think mm-hmm. eight, the eight week vacation like it's not a great yes. looks, but it's like it is something, right? Um, him losing the Valorant spot that's up to Riot's discretion, right? And Riot has a bad history with like misogyny in their own company and just like issues, right? So I understand them like you got to start somewhere, right? You can't just keep saying like, oh, you know, it's hypocritical if they do something, if they don't do something, they're bad. And I'm like, okay, you got to like start somewhere. So yeah. that I'm also fine with him losing his CEO spot, though. I don't really get it, honestly. I think that he's one of the few CEOs, not just like the OG CEOs, he's one of the few CEOs that like has noticeably made correct decisions in the esports sense consistently. Mm-hmm. And like amongst the OG ones, he's definitely the only one, right? Like Reggie sometimes does well and sometimes does absolute crap plays, right? And for Carlos in every esport, he has made a European organization in one of the, I think it was like sixth place on a Forbes list that has a lot of made up numbers, but he's one of the biggest and most important influential esports orgs out there. I think the investors, they can be justified in some way in doing this, like try mm-hmm. to push them out, but they will probably look back on it a couple of years later and be like, well, we don't have any identity and we're not making good decisions. And whoever they put in is like, hopefully they're good, but it's, it's kind of more of a coin flip, right? So in that sense, it's a big loss. He is one of the OGs. I don't like him personally on a personal level, but mm-hmm. I think I have to respect like what they've been able to accomplish, right? Yeah. And for the last thing, like, if your association with something should get you fired, then like a lot of LEC or Riot EU should be fired because they wanted to do a partnership with Neon. The That's Saturday right. Fund. Yeah. This was like a, a big time. deal, yep. right? Yeah. And a lot of the European casters like spoke up about it. And so if they, this isn't just like association. This is them saying, mm-hmm. we want this as our yeah. sponsorship. We are t- openly sanctioning this. So why are we not uh, seeing heads roll in that sense? Mm-hmm. What was, that was when... Um... LEC wanted to partner with like Saudi Arabia or something, right? Yeah, right. Neom is the Saudi Arabian yeah. fund yeah. that they do for venture capital around the world, and it was a, announced as like one of their like big title sponsors, right? Yeah, and, or not title sponsors, one of their head sponsors. And the backlash from LEC's casters was so big 
that they actually walked it back but later on yeah. there was like talk behind the scenes so like these guys got reprimanded for like speaking up against the company in public and like losing brand value or whatever but i'm like dude mm -hmm. that is not just associated that's not just saying i choose my friends or whatever not i agree this is saying i condone this and this is what i stand for or i, I like money so much that i don't give a crap right yeah so to yeah. me i'm like why didn't i see any heads roll there so, mm. saudi arabia takes misogyny to a different level like <laughs> yeah. a very different level unfortunately yeah. so that is really bad <laughs> yeah thanks yeah i mean overall i think this is a bit much um but and I, I think he, I, I don't think this happens if he doesn't send out the tweet saying Pe I won't let people police my friendships. That was yeah. the nail in the coffin. That that's where he screwed himself over. If he just said, "Hey, my bad, I'll take it down. My apologies. I, I don't rep this doesn't represent you. You know all the the, the PR stuff you always say. This doesn't yeah. happen. Um, but at the same time, it, with how things are today, with that kind of thing just know better man like you should just know better yeah it sucks for yeah. him and i feel bad but it was, a, it was a pretty stupid mistake uh i mean like when uh i think uh, i've heard a lot of streamers and uh personalities um just like talking casually about how a lot of league of legends i think i mentioned it in the last podcast too it doesn't make money directly it's all mm -hmm. actually very indirect and a lot of how people get money and like get numbers such as like viewers or clicks or subscribers or whatever it is just through like public space talking and like uh social connections and it is just honestly through twitter followers and twitter interaction and stupid <laughs> stuff like that right so mm -hmm. like if you have a bad image on twitter it's like your whole company in esports or at least league of legends esports um so i do think it's a big blow um I also think, uh, I think Casual or someone was talking about how, I don't remember, it was some personality, but they were talking about how it's unlikely that it was just this one thing that caused Valorant to get denied. I think it was, like, an excuse to, like, like, there are other things going on behind the scenes that we don't know about that caused them to lose the Valorant spot, and it's unclear whether this like interaction with andrew tate and carlos actually mm. caused it but it all happened at the same time and there's also a lot of other things that carlos has done in the past at least in terms of social um media and stuff that have caused a lot of grief for carlos i mean there's just he's been accused of poaching for years and years now he said yeah. a bunch of stuff about perks where he's like perks is my bro i would never you know, hurt him and then makes a contract, sells him to C9 where he can't get sold to Fnatic, stuff like that, right? Mm -hmm. Where it's like really backstabby, really crappy for the industry, really crappy for the player. And then of course, Perk still defends him and stuff like that. So there's a lot of shady stuff that Carlos has done in the past in like normal business sense that I think has really, I don't know, rubbed people the wrong way. Um, so my guess is honestly, um, yeah, there was stuff going on that got uh, Carlos, like, made resign slash fired. You know, whatever yeah. the wording is, right? He chose to resign. He got fired. He got pressured into it. I imagine there's a lot of stuff we just don't know about that happened that caused this thing. And that this thing is just the main front page, and it's a really easy scapegoat uh, to do. So that's my guess. Um, but if we're talking about just the fact that he got fired for this, like, incident with Andrew yeah. Tate... It's really extreme. I do think it is really extreme, but like when we're going to a world, like we're an all male podcast, right? <laughs> we're an all male dominated esports industry. I yeah. do think that if you want to be open towards women, and if let's say we had a woman's opinion on this podcast, they would be like, yeah, it's extreme, but like we got to start somewhere. We have a start a president. Like women just do not really have a voice in esports, and women get screwed over just automatically just by the nature of, of the world. So um, I guess I'm kind of glad it happened in the sense of as long as it keeps going, right? As long as we can keep calling out misogyny and keep reprimanding people for doing and saying and hanging out with people inappropriately. Um, but I mean, if it's just a one and done and this is just a PR stunt to hide other stuff that Carlos has done to get him fired, then it's just like, we're just manipulating audiences. So, Well, then I guess that's what, yeah. that's, that's what I'm hoping. Like I'm hoping... You know, if it if it was deserved and it's a long time building and maybe that was just the 
the last straw thing and kind of the easy way to be like, oh, now's a good time. You know what I mean? Like to, yeah. to, to cut them loose and, and all that stuff. Then, then fine. I really hope it's not just the the one thing. Right. Like I said, like um, again, like, you know, Andrew Tate is one thing and him associating with them is not a good look. But again, like we talked about that guilty by association. Right. Like where is the line drawn? Because that can trickle down on so many different levels. But either way, I think that whole storyline is, is just interesting because again, I mentioned it last time. It's kind of a precedent into, you know, the future of where is this, is where this is going. Companies already have to be careful with who they, you know, associate with, you know, now players and owners, and it's very important. Image is important. Um, well, it's so, not that who you, it's not, the, it's not who you associate with. It's who you associate with publicly. That's the problem. Well, yeah, of course. But that's the thing that we live in a world. Well, and I will say it's not like somebody like paparazzi took the picture of Carlos and Andrew Tate and posted it. <laughs> this dude himself took the picture and posted it. So he is dumb for doing it. I'm not saying it was the smartest no, move. No, I'm that, just saying, saying that like, like he, there's no way this. Was, yeah, I, I would be very surprised if this is the first time they hung out. Right. This right. is the first time yeah. everyone's hearing about it. Exactly. If they just kept it private, this doesn't happen. Yeah. I mean, yeah, and again, but it's. It's also kind of like, I mean, isn't it like if he's been hanging out with Andrew Tate the whole time, right? And then he's dumb enough to post a picture and we would never find out. Then secretly, he, he's been hanging out with Andrew Tate the whole time and they're yeah. obviously having conversations about something. Yeah. And it makes you really wonder, all right, how long have they been friends? And yeah. does no, Carlos I can, I, actually I completely agree. I, I'm just for, saying, so, like, this doesn't happen I, I mean, if it doesn't go public. Yeah, for an individual, for Carlos, yeah, it's stupid, and, and like it sucks for him that it happened. But I'm personally glad it did happen because hmm. I want to know if people in my esports that I love are hanging out with freaking accused criminals and stuff. I don't want that. So yeah. in, a, in a weird lucky sense, it's like, yeah, he was stupid enough to tell us all. But now it's like we're starting to, we're starting to think like, what other sketchy-ass crap are our CEOs doing? Like who kind of people are they hanging out with, right? Because you start it with like, you know – uh, sex trafficking criminal accused and it, it could just who knows what kind of crazy people these CEOs are hanging out with and it's just a like a commentary on the world like yeah. people who are rich and powerful they just don't follow the same rules and we are That's why a bunch of peasants. I've said this before. Peasants, man. <laughs> Take away the freaking Twitter accounts. These CEOs are so stupid. They've got to get no, I a don't, whole... don't take away the Twitter accounts. I want them to No, I know that. I know that, I but I'm know. saying they're shooting themselves in the foot. Like they're being so, okay they're like as 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 it. as quote yeah. unquote like quote unquote I said it's like smart that they you know they've gotten themselves to where they are like it's just like just a common sense like brain dead like honestly it's a thing. blessing I think it's a blessing yeah. in a disguise really because I, I want to know honestly I'm just a peasant playing league and platinum bro like what are these guys up to why are yeah. they doing this oh they're actually really shitty people it makes me feel better about myself at least yeah. <laughs> well but see like so like I said like that very topic I think you you know again it's it can be very two sided. I think there's a lot of opinions that can go into that because, uh, you know, and I know we're spending a little bit of time on this, but I think it is important because it's not just the story in itself, but as a whole, like, again, like I understand the, the point and yes, it's good to hear that it came out, but I guess what I'm saying is, is that like, how do, how then do we like, we're like moral policing every single person and like, at what point do you draw the line? Because yes, they may have been friends. Has Carlos ever done anything himself? No. But does that still make him a guilty and so to speak, because he's hanging out with someone who's accused of doing the things. Okay. Has it, I'm, I'm not, I mean, I don't like the guy either, but he's not by court of law been, you know, actually found guilty of anything yet. He's accused. Yeah. So what I'm saying and, is what I'm saying yeah. is like, there's no standard. There's no, like it's, it's such a great area because at some point there's gotta be a line that's, that's drawn or if there is even going to be a line, but like you said, like with the Saudi Arabia thing, like people were up in arms there, but I guarantee you that every issue we have, I don't think that line will be as clear cut. And there will be people on both sides saying like, that's not fair. And then other people think that's absolutely fair. He shouldn't be hanging out with those people. And I, you know, he should be punished. Yeah. I get the sentiment. And I think that it's like, yeah, it, there, where's, where do you draw the line? The line is like being attempted to being drawn right now. Cause there is no rule about it. That exactly. By yep. association. And yep. there's no law. Right. But Carlos, yep. Like, not only did he not break any laws, but no laws were broken to cause his resignation either. So everything has been legal so far, yep, yep, right? Yep. He broke some rules for his company maybe, but not by the law. Yep. And he's getting employee company 
consequences. Right? Well, see that that so, that's that's a good point. I sorry, but that's a really good point because you you said like company employee thing because I do think that it is well within a company's right to uh, punish their employee or you know whoever's underneath them for things they do outside of work because that does reflect their brand, their company. And so Facebook has shot a lot of regular employees in the foot just because they post stupid things and maybe like they're in a position where, hey, that image isn't really good for what you do as a profession, right? Like in our company. And so I get get what you're saying there. Like, and I think, yes, from that standpoint, yeah. Yeah, from a company standpoint Mm -hmm. and the social media standpoint is like obviously very gray area, right? And you don't want to get to the point where it's like people just attack anybody, any celebrity for any single thing they do, right? But like there has been some pretty accurate attackings and some things are a little too crazy where Twitter universe goes insane. But like when people, when celebrities are coming out saying like anti-vax stuff and like don't Mm -hmm. wear masks, don't take the vaccine, like... I think that's a proper like they didn't break any laws. That's not illegal yeah. to say any of that stuff. It's actually perfectly justified within their rights to say that stuff. Yeah. But they're getting attacked socially, and there is like a moral police that's both toxic and good. And finding yeah, that yeah. line is nearly impossible and very complicated. But I do think that we always, if we want our world to be comfortable in a social media sense, we always have to try. We always have to try and look for that line, and we're always going to shoot too far, and we're always going to shoot too under. But these are celebrities, right? And these are people with millions and billions of dollars. Yeah. Like, screw it, man. Like, they could take a little heat. You do something stupid and you want a Twitter following. If you want, like, you could just F off of Twitter. You're right. And still have your millions and billions of dollars. That's right. It's elective. It's just like, it's just, you're Mm -hmm. you're crying with fucking dollar bills as your (laughs) issues, man. I I have no sympathy. (laughs) Oh, life is so hard. Oh, my God. I'm getting reprimanded on Twitter. Everybody's attacking me. Oh, my God. And they're they're reading it as they're on their private jet, too. Like, oh, I lost. lost, Oh, my God. I got 50 DMs telling me some terrible stuff. Yeah, it hurts, man. (laughs) But it's like, you know, maybe don't say anti-vax stuff. Maybe don't hang out with, you know, you want to be this popular and famous. You want to be a misogynist, but you don't want to be attacked on Twitter. Then you have all the tools within your disposal to not do that. From an individualistic person, from a society, we are society for, I'm just some dude sitting at home watching TV, playing League of Legends on my computer and Platinum. Like, dude, you know, your life is like infinitely better than something I will ever see. I don't know, man. I think your life sounds pretty good right now, man. Playing and playing Platinum. Mine is pretty good. (laughs) It's pretty dope. Don't make it sound so bad. It sounds great, man. It's not a bad life, right? But like, you know, you have a guy. Yeah. I'm gonna take a you private see. jet to to France and get a baguette, and then I'll be back at home <laughs> back to see the game. <laughs> All right, I like it. <laughs> <French rich people. laughs> that's yeah, that's it. All right, uh, let's move on. But hey, that was a great discussion. I, I think there's gonna be a lot more of those to come, and that's why I wanted to, to kind of go back to it. But uh, so coming back to Worlds, Fnatic's got a roster change because they were having trouble uh, getting over here. I believe it was COVID, right? Uh, so Hillisang and Upset are out. And uh, I don't know. Do you guys remember who's who's subbing in for them? Yeah, the name is Beans, who was played last year. Same sub for Upset, and the support's like Rux or something. Who is Rux. from their okay. ERL or Academy, whatever. And did they did they say when uh, they'll be able to get back, or is it still up in the air? Not really sure. Up, upset and Hill saying they can't play until they test negative. Okay. Yeah, I, I think in Mexico. Yeah, but in America, I think the law is different. I think you have to be tested negative for 14 days. So mm-hmm. if in Mexico, I think there's a chance that if they test negative, literally on the day of play-ins, they can play. But in America, like let's say they tested positive like within like a few like a few days of going to to group stage in America, yeah. like they might still not be able to play even if they are clear. Because okay. you have to quarantine for 14 days. So pretty unfortunate stuff. It is. Um, <laughs> so, I mean, what do you think that, What do you think the implications are? Do, do you think this hurts them uh, in their plans or, or what? Yeah, well, of course it I hurts mean, them. I mean, they lost their two starters. Yeah, but I mean, I like, it, is it going to – I mean, uh, of course it's going to hurt them, but is it going to hurt them enough is what I'm saying. Like, Yeah, they're making okay. it out of plans or not. Yeah, that's what I mean. It's going to hurt them enough that they might make it out of plans, but they're going to make it out of plans behind EG now. EG might be starting Calorie again, which is confirmed. Um, Danny is oh, wow. not starting. Okay. But uh, losing both of your all-star bot lane, who's like still top two, top three in Europe, is going to make a huge impact on that team. It's like you are losing your star player. Upset is the 
second best or best player, depending on like how you thought of um, what's his name? Their jungle is like Humanite? Razork. Oh. No, what? is their jungler? Razork, yeah. Yeah, Razork. Yeah, sorry, I bad with the EU names, but whatever you think of Razork's performance in finals, I thought he was really sick. But Humanoid is pretty bad. So that's why I'm like, you losing that bot lane is a problem. Humanoid's mm -hmm. been like very up or down recently. Uh, will they not make out? No. I mean, they should still be fine. It, 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 the, okay, actually. Not I don't calling know it. Good... They're, they're going to drop out instead of, and DFM's going to make it out of groups instead of Fnatic. <laughs> that's what you I was wondering. Play, like, you would play in slow. Um, you would play yikes. in slow. It, it, it's a little scary now, especially. Yeah, they also have, <laughs> I think there's a Vietnamese team in the, in the play-ins as well. So, like, it just means that, like, they're much more likely to lose. And, like, what I would say, like, besides just analyzing it is, like, it makes things a lot spicier, which is good for the viewers. But, like, what, what did Upset do? Like, what did he do in his life to deserve this two worlds in a row where, like, <laughs> yeah, stuff no. just happens? Damn. And he's just, like, unlucky. Like, okay, last year, we won't go too far into it. We already talked about yeah. it in last year's podcast. Drama. But, like, this year, like, come on, man. He, like, must have, like, signed. He must have, like, got the monkey's paw. He's, like. I'll do anything to qualify for Worlds <laughs> starting last year. And they're like, yes, sir. And then curls yeah. a little bit. There you go, buddy. <laughs> he gets the call every time. And Beans gets uh, – I saw a funny post saying Beans was the most experienced LEC AD carry going to Worlds of the four LEC AD carries. Oh, my God. And he has gosh. never played an LEC game. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. It's most it? Worlds experienced LEC player. Yeah, yeah, most That's Worlds hilarious. Yeah. yeah. And I'm just like, what in God's name? Yeah, so yeah. – uh, it's great. It's, this is a great chance for him to play again. The fact that he wasn't picked up in the time between last year's world sub and this year's world sub means that the guy's not good enough. Like that's that's what I think. He's not good enough for LEC. He wasn't terrible last year, but they they bombed out because they just didn't have their roster together, right? They went like so, one in five last year. It was pretty bad. <laughs> yeah, it was pretty bad, right? But but was it looked tilted? Yeah. Like everyone looked tilted. Mm -hmm. But was running in the jungle. Man, it was Same not with Adam. Great. Adam was actually useless. <laughs> Adam's career that. ended that. that yeah. That <laughs> yeah. Um, not just because of himself. Like, it was honestly unlucky. So, all that to say, I think Fnatic is likely to still make it out. Like, but it's like 60% instead of like 100, which was what I was thinking before. Mm. Okay. All right. Any yeah. other thoughts? I mean, it's pretty, it's pretty bad. Um, uh, Bupo was saying he, he he had a stream thing where he actually brought up the upset I saw stuff that. from last year. Yeah. Apparently, it's like we know like 1% of actually what happened. <laughs> mm -hmm. So yeah. there was a whole bunch of crap Drama. that went down with upset. I would be surprised if just upset as like a human being. It's like a character is just very complicated um, and causes yeah. a lot of stuff. There's also another uh, clip where upset was talking with LS uh, and it wasn't until literally, I think, a few days ago, like from right now, like from right now, a few days ago, they hadn't even started scrimming. They hadn't even get, like played together. They're just, they're just not playing. They're just playing solo queue and stuff like that. Oh my gosh. So if like this guy, this team has literally had a week or less scrimming with Bean and the other dude. Um, so it's looking pretty, it's looking pretty that's dude. Not good. Like, they, <laughs> yeah, that's they not good. They would have to really get their crap together for this Thursday for play-ins. Um, and then finally, just a little funny stuff. Apparently, there are players named there's Bean, who's Fnatic's uh, current going to be current AD carry. There's some support hanging out named Bean Sue, and then <laughs> there's some jungler named Bean J. They could have all combined their powers. We could have had a full Fnatic Bean roster. The Infinity had, Beans. The Infinity Beans. That would have been awesome. <laughs> I would have loved that. Fnatic is like, oh, our world, we're screwed with our world tour. Let's be, let's let's hire the Beans <laughs> yeah. guys, Mr. Beans. Um, so I thought that would have been cool. <laughs> now, Alistair's predicting that DFM uh, will, will that, overtake. That was this. a meme. That okay. was a meme. <laughs> is there any uh, serious, okay. <laughs> is there any, like, does anyone have any serious, like, uh, contenders to possibly, because, you know, you said 60%, Kevin. Does, that means there's 40%. Some team out there has a chance to overtake them. What what team would that be in, in your eyes yeah. as far as so their group. the thing that i'm still unclear about is like how is it structured in terms of the like format. you know there's first seed just gets out second mm -hmm. seed needs to like do some cross play stuff right and that's where yeah. it gets really messy because that other side has drx and rng yeah in my mind rng gets out drx is there i don't think you lose immediately if you lose to drx you i think you have another chance or something if i remember all of the weird formats we've done in in world's play history uh 
But anyways, the, the teams that I think can do a upset are Beyond Gaming, which is the PCS second seed. Uh, DFM, unironically, like they almost beat C9, or they made it out last year. Yeah, mm-hmm. DFM's they made it out a couple times, so yeah, yeah, it's like not out it, of the it's, it's got to stop being a like a weird thing to think about, right? And it's like on yeah. Buffalo, like Saigon yeah. Buffalo did okay. Yeah, they went like two wins or whatever last uh, this MSI. But like they're playing against fanatic, anemic fanatic. Like that's not G two when they were playing on fire, right? So mm-hmm. it it could happen. Those three teams are my guesses. My best bet would probably be modern Saigon Buffalo. Still think that team is better than Beyond Gaming. I think PCS number one is usually good, and then like number two just like falls off a cliff. I have almost no faith in PCS number two, unless they're playing except against to beat Team Liquid once. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I was exactly. trying to get that in, <laughs> but this year, this year we're safe. Okay, we're not true. here. We're not we're here. Right 100% record <laughs> right now. Also, Saigon Buffalo still doesn't have all their visas. So even if they do show up and like last minute get everything signed up, they will still be like super jet lag. Like this is a round the world play into world's competition. Yeah. Okay. They so also, yeah, they won't have scrims either. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, this dude, this world's been so scuffed, man. So many people not getting their visas. We have already in plans. EG has a sub and Fnatic has two subs. This is kind of like, what the hell's going on? All right, hopefully I mean, to be fair, the EG one, was, EG one was planned ahead of time, so that's kind of different than like, the Fnatic one. Nothing to do with world organization. Yeah. 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 I think I think narratively it still hurts, though, right? Because it's like Danny, Upset, Hillisang. These guys are like, they kind of like the main stars of their team almost. <laughs> yeah. uh, feels bad. At least at least Danny has uh, had a lot JoJo. of time to... Yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, they have JoJo and they have Inspired, but they had a lot of time with Kauri to adjust, mm-hmm. but... Man, it is super scuffed with the play-ins. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Do you guys want to talk about the games? I mean, we're kind of already there. Um, yeah. Is there any particular matchup, or how do you want to tackle this? I mean, I don't know if we need to go right. into every single matchup, but uh, Fnatic <laughs> versus EG, battle of the there it is. bot lanes. Who is gonna win? We I think we have win this. Zero information to go. I think we of. win this, baby. <laughs> I'm just going. You I know, think we win this too. <laughs> yeah, North America, baby. I take inspired of a Razork every day, so. I think we win this. I also I take JoJo. Honestly, yeah. yeah. JoJo's been smurfing in Champs 2. And I think the hype thing is we could potentially see Fnatic play against Mad Lions to knock the, knock Mad Lions <laughs> up. <Yeah. God. laughs> potentially, if that would be Mad funny. Lions not win a single best of <laughs> I'm still, I'm still ready war. for that. That is my hype play in uh, narrative. I mean, that that's very likely because uh, the way it works is... so. Third and fourth in Group B will play against second place in Group A. So Fnatic mm-hmm. gets group or second in Group A, which is what we're predicting. And Mad Lions comes in third. They play best of five against uh, Fnatic. So that that is very likely. Possibility. Yeah, or you could switch it. Mad Lions places higher, which I think is more likely. Mad Lions is actually like a decent team. I mean, they they, have, like, they would have to Ophelia. win. I mean, they would be playing against either. Uh, well, they have to place higher than DRX and RNG for that to happen. No. Yeah, never mind. It's not happening. Yeah. yeah well, I saying. don't know. DRX is also really sus, too. DRX, Mad Lions, Fnatic, EG, every team is super sus, except RNG. RNG is going to win every single game. Mm-hmm. But DRX is very, very sus. Um, I actually don't have a lot of faith in them, just like as a consistency. Uh, I will say something that worries me about Fnatic in that... Like, even with these two subs, right, their top side should outclass most of the uh, wildcard teams. But Wonder has a very, he's, he's got a long history and career of kind of running it against people who he doesn't respect. He doesn't show up on the game day if it's not against a team that he finds worthy. And it's been him in the butt more times than I can count when he was on G2, where they actually just end up losing. And he gets like repeatedly solo killed by some like random ass top laner from some other region. So uh, <laughs> I'm a little worried that Wonder is just gonna come in and be like, I don't care. I don't even need a bot lane. I'm just gonna dumpster this guy. Oh, I keep dying to ganks. Oh, I'm 0 and 7. Oh shit, I'm Summit. You know that can happen. <laughs> I'm so, Summit. Uh, <laughs> he said I'm yeah. yeah, that's good. Uh oh. Uh oh. So it's big. I think, but uh, I think a fanatic, like if they full try hard, I think they should still make it out. Their top side is still should still be good enough. Okay. Are there any like matchups matchups that you're particularly excited? I'm looking at the games list, and uh, I mean, like you said, uh, this is this might be the year where you know we were talking about minor regions and like 
different possible formats, right? Because it's like, why are they why are they even here? But what if this is the year <laughs> that a minor region does somehow surprise uh, one of these teams because it is kind of looking you never know what could happen with like eg or Fnatic or even mad lions you know like or even drx right like with all yeah. these teams just being so sus right now and inconsistent and you know whatever's happening behind the scenes like what if this is the year what if one of these minor regions seems like yeah maybe they're not good but they just got their stuff together you know and they're just like yeah. oh well we're just we're just ready to go though <laughs> like you know we've I'd had no issues surprised i'd yeah. only just be a little surprised to be like oh wow, one of our super like messy teams <laughs> messy team get their yeah. shit together have a bunch of subs or just sus in general yeah, yeah. I hope I, I mean, don't think I DRX hope... is going more than them yeah. no 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 but I mean I think it would be interesting again it would throw a wrench in the plans but um yeah I don't know how likely that is okay um any anything else with the matchups any any particular things y'all want to talk about within there group stage waiting room for me yeah that's basically what it is I think it was, it was i think it was it's good to bring up and talk about but the hype honestly completely collapsed for me when i realized that Fnatic and eg are just gonna have subs and i'm just like mm. yeah I, I have hype R rng is gonna farm so many of my pickums for me <laughs> <laughs> and i i'm just like that's like a bingo card for me like gal <sighs> pentakill bingo oh my gosh yeah dude that, so there you go. i'm just the whole time I was just looking at the pick, I'm like, who's going to have the best kitty? I'm like, who's going through play-ins? Who's good? It's just RNG, mm. right? You're right? And especially yeah. after everything happened, I was like, oh my god, we're going to find... We're eating good. RNG yeah. can make yeah. orders, so like, it's going to be free low. So I, I'm excited. It's going to be hilarious watching the games. For, for pickums, yeah. Because yeah. I think generally, if like you're a group stage team and you do make it to the finals, unless like you're stopping 3-0, your kitty A doesn't usually look all that great. Unless like... You know, you're stop, you're stomp winning. Yeah. Because I, I even think of EDG's run last year, right? They had like several five game series. I bet even the world champions, their like world record KDAs or whatever, whatever their KDA weren't even that great because you know they had a bunch of five game series leading up mm -hmm. to their championship. So, yeah, RNG is a good call for uh, pick 'em stats and stuff. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Uh. Well, let's kind of talk about then. Uh. This kind of twofold, but you know, we usually like to talk about meta and what might be coming up. But a good way we can kind of see glimpses or previews is you know Champions Q, right? This is have been this has been kind of a big thing that's been happening recently because all the the players are starting to make it in. Uh, T1 just entered Champions Q. Um, and so we're getting to see these pro players from other regions come into this awesome game-like environment. And maybe that's a place where we can get glimpses of what might be meta, uh, what, what people are trying out and stuff. And I know, Alistair, you had mentioned a couple things that you were hearing or seeing in Champions Q, Champions Q regarding ADCs. But uh, yeah, you want to talk about that a little bit? Uh, what, what you were seeing there and what, what the possible bot lane meta might be? Yeah, so I don't really have an inside scoop on this. It was more just from <laughs> no, watching. no, no. You have it an inside scoop. <laughs> it was. I mean, I I probably do have people I could ask, but I haven't. Um, but according to the most recent Doublelift video, where he's playing in <laughs> Champs Q yeah. with Sven yeah. in comms, okay, Sven's saying, okay. uh, "No one's playing Zeri. Champs dead. Um, no one cares. I'm pretty happy about that." But apparently the um, well, the surprising one for me is Misfortune's not, um, like, pick ban. Um, mm, yeah. Champ's super strong, but apparently she's the third best. Apparently the t two most prioritized AD carries right now are Caitlyn and Draven. Obviously, Draven fluctuates in priority depending on how good the AD carry is at actually playing Draven. Uh, yeah. which, personally, as an AD carry sounds really interesting and, like, a lot of fun to watch. Uh, I mean, Draven's always fun to watch. Yeah. Obviously, we're, we're gonna see Aphelios. Aphelios makes an appearance always, because the champ's always good, just because he can do pretty much everything. Yeah. Um, but especially because I play Caitlyn, uh, I'm excited to see that. Though I'm not excited to see all these people build Gale Force, Rapid Fire Cannon, do no damage mid game. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, Alistair is actually known in uh, as as in ex excellency as the king of Caitlyn. So. <laughs> It's all about it the uh, Gale Force collector builds, uh, or, or well, Gale Force LDR and competitive because collector. Or Gale Force it. LDR. Okay, okay, I can dig it. Yeah, um, so that's pretty cool. I actually, I've always been a fan of just uh, Kraken Slayer because usually because I just don't use my Gale Force. <laughs> <Whenever> <laughs> I play Kraken's like, not even bad. Yeah, yeah I like, I Kraken, love Kraken. Gale RFC just don't do damage. Yeah, you don't do damage. I mean, Gale RFC like 
it's like only a gym build really in my opinion yeah but exactly. like yeah so other people who do it is just kind of like whatever um yeah so the interesting thing about caitlin and draven is that they're both incredibly hard early game bully champions and it's not like a real thing but i think like a lot of teams will like they look they have a caitlin lane or a draven lane and they're like okay path bot right everybody in the whole game is going to bot lane the whole meta is about bot lane right and when that happens in pro play at least you very quickly get like super simple just counter strats where it's like okay we're just gonna play super far away from bot lane and focus somewhere else on the map right because like if you're playing against a caitlin you can you can go for like traditional counters like mf or Jin or ash or varus or whatever same with uh draven a lot of those champs work together um and you can just be like kind of get crapped on in lane have a decent matchup and then outscale with utility um and then you focus all of your attention on the other side because I mean, almost always, at least when I'm a jungler or when I hear other junglers talk, if you have a Caitlyn lane, it's pushing. You have to go bot lane or your bot lane is, is stuffed. And you have to stack drags or your Caitlyn and Draven aren't going to be useful in the mid game. Because they have, because Caitlyn especially has a really big mid game dip. So um, this stuff is super, I don't know, counterable. Uh, so I don't know how long Caitlyn Draven will stick. It might just be even a champs Q meta where people play very aggress no, that, aggressively that was, and play for high so tempo. I'm saying that about scrims. Not gems. Okay. Oh, okay. It's a scrim meta. Interesting. Yeah, okay. Scrims. So, yeah, that's interesting. I don't really know. I mean, man, I I don't have enough insight, I guess, on how scrim meta always translates to stage meta. But, yeah, uh, my guess is that it it'll stay away, stick around for a while. It might even reach group stage meta. But very quickly, we're gonna see good teams with like good top sides of the map, just like take the L in bot lane and just focus all their draft resources on having a winning top side and then go for Rift and like just dive dive the Caitlyn in the mid game and she's useless. Um, so we'll see. Also, I think Draven is usually just a counter matchup. Uh, when it's be when it's ever blind picked, I feel like it's really scary for Dravens to get to blind pick into any situation. Um, so I don't know if that'll actually happen on stage, right? Most Draven players, they would not want to just blind pick it. Um, they want like a good matchup, so we'll see how that goes. I don't know. I yeah. I would expect that it's gonna be a top centric meta. For it's gonna be like 50-50. You're gonna have one team path bot for, towards a Caitlyn or a Draven. And you're gonna have the other team just slam bruisers, and because mm, neither yeah. of those champs are very good against bruisers. Yeah, it's, they're th not. It's really hard they're... for them to burn through Death Dance and Ninja Tabby. So yeah, and their their whole goal is just getting really ahead early and just always being ahead of the curve. Um, and if you get your top side ahead, right, yeah, and they have Death Dance and Ninja Tabas and they're on par with the ADC, yeah, you, you don't kill them. <laughs> you don't kill them. Um, so yeah, that, that is interesting in the bot meta. Uh, another thing I've been seeing in Champs Q, I don't know how this relates either, right, because it's like people play a lot more aggressively in Champs Q, is a lot more engaged supports. Uh, yeah. There's like some Lulu, you see, but I've been seeing like a lot of um, like Leona, Amumu, and Thresh, weirdly enough. I thought that champ was garbage, but he got buffed i've been seeing yep. some a lot of thresh um and i've been seeing yeah nautilus still but yeah a lot of amumu yeah, i've played so. a couple of thresh games uh just because uh yeah like i don't know for some reason he just feels tankier i don't even know what his buffs were honestly uh you're, but you're he, playing him because i said he was bad yeah probably but <laughs> i, I that's probably here. why why did i play it because probably alistair said he was bad but actually yeah i actually felt like he was he was pretty decent i'm not good at thresh so the yeah. fact that I was able to like survive a lot of my mistakes, I was like, "Whoa, this feels not as uh, not as depressing uh, to be dying all the time." So that was just. Oh, my... I was seeing a lot of Bard too. I was seeing a lot of Bard oh. in Champs Q, and I was also seeing a lot of um, Maokai support also. Yeah. Really, even yeah. With his I mean, changes, this is huh? just random vods and yeah, clips yeah. I've been seeing. Sure. Like, I, I'll watch like Kobe or Azale stream Champs Q, and I'll just see the stuff. I mean, we still see Enchanters too. It's a pretty diverse bot lane from what I've seen. Yeah. yeah. I mean, honestly, for the for my pickums, I couldn't think of a single champ other than maybe Silas that's going to be flexed other than Maokai. So I put Maokai oh, as going to be the one to flex to min into most roles. Mm -hmm. he oh, I did Sejuani. I did Sejuani, so jungle and top for Sejuani for that. Yeah, I guess Sej, but I don't, I don't think she yeah. can pick, be picked jungle much. I think my, so. I, my I prediction's mean... Maokai. Yeah, Maokai is obviously okay. Maokai is giga broken. Yeah, he stupidly, is. stupidly giga broken. He can triple flex, top jungle, and support. Um, I just don't know if teams are actually gonna pick him. I have no idea because like, it's a, it's like, 
Aatrox didn't get nerfed and is still a thing. Has a great time into Maokai. Um, so is Orin, honestly. Orin has a pretty good matchup into Maokai, too, in top lane. So I don't know if you'll see top lane. Jungle is like his clear is still really slow. And you have Sejuani still as a tank jungler. Like, we just left a meta where Sejuani was being banned almost every game because of the top jungle flex. And she didn't get nerfed at all. And all the other junglers and top laners got nerfed around her. So... I don't know if we're... I mean, there's still Aatrox, Sejuani, and all this stuff from the old meta that we're seeing. So I don't know how much Maokai will actually see. I mean, maybe it just takes over. Um, but yeah, it's pretty interesting to think about. Um, yeah, I mean, I, I could go on and on about meta. I, I have so many ideas about the meta. Um, if we are still continuing on this train. Yeah, yeah. Which looks I like mean, we are. Kevin, did you have yeah. any uh, jungle uh, picks? Or have you seen anything uh, as far as like... Uh... You know, maybe what about in the mid lane? Is have you guys seen anything uh, interesting Akali, there? Azir. Oh yeah, yes, I did Akali. see Akali. Oh my gosh, did Azir you guys see? Uh, who was it? Jojo, Jojo, Jojo on a oh. Yeah. Yeah. I'm not excited to watch Akali. I'm I, really I, I, I like I'm excited. <laughs> I, I <laughs> am. I am because I, okay, I'm excited to see Akali because the champ's fun to watch when yeah. people are actually good at it. But I hate Akali as a champion because she's so poorly designed, has almost no counterplay. I, I just don't want to see it. XD from the ADC main. Yeah. Oh, I'm, yeah. I'm literally like, there is not that strong Alistar said. 13 nurse later. I'm like, yeah. No, Zeri, Zeri, I, no, I, okay, Zeri is not good. It's enchanters that are buffering her up. I swear to God, Zeri does not do damage without an enchanter. He got nerfed 13 times, Alistar, in I one year. He's <laughs> only one year old. Uh, let's bully Alistar, the Zeri. ADC main. Why yeah, is every good. other AD carry not giga busted with enchanters? And it's only Zeri and a few others. <laughs> Very simple question here. I will say, Alistair was so Alistair was right about Jinx because he was preaching about Jinx for a long time. He was. But you were definitely wrong about Zeri not being good, bro. Because that that champ has been good for so long. I mean, she's not good now, but yeah, she, uh, she took a lot of they, it. They finally yeah. broke her ankles. They we'll finally her. broke her. She, yes. She'll probably be like, we'll probably see like there'll Sad. be like five ADC bands, and then we'll see like. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Viper play Zeri. Some, some are you guys still seeing Sivir? Because Sivir was like, I actually have. I've seen. I actually haven't seen much Sivir. It's all been yeah. like misfortune that I've been seeing. I don't know. In Champsky, I actually haven't seen much Caitlyn Jim, but I've been seeing a ton of misfortune and a ton mm. of Thresh and stuff like that. So I don't know what the hell is going on. Maybe people are just playing for fun. I have no idea. Yeah. Also, uh, I don't, don't want to hear that I was wrong about Zeri. <laughs> Everyone thought Zeri was garbage at the beginning. No, I was not no, the only no, one. No! No, we Kevin said, did not. We all the said, I was the only one. I was like, this is Giga Busted. Everyone yeah. said it will be Giga Busted, but it's trash right now. No, Everyone Kevin said, did it. I remember no, Kevin not saying maybe that. Maybe Kevin did I was Everyone definitely saying this. I like... Episode after episode, I'm like, this is Giga Busted, dude. I've been watching. I predicted the world champion last year. Sorry, are we bragging? Uh, yeah, we were over there. I, have, I can't brag. I can't brag. We're just throwing out our dubs, you know. Yeah, just, <laughs> this is flex hour right now. Flex five, right? Uh, we're just five quick, minutes. Quick flexing. answer to the meta thing. Nothing super specific. Uh, Hecarim is going to be super annoying. I feel so bad for AD oh, as a player yeah. who plays Hecarim. I know it did get nerfed, so maybe it'll be a little less played, but it's disgusting. That character was so hilarious. Shit. When I saw the rework, me and uh, Mitchell on the patch preview episode, yeah. we're like, what is this shit? This <laughs> yeah. yeah. So, uh, okay. Yeah, that's what I think about it. Well, no, I actually have a lot of comments about Hecarim, though. I actually don't think he'll see any play. Uh, his yeah, nerfs are uh, too big. Oh, any play, you said? Oh, I, I mean, he might see a little play, play, but like, he's not going to be a mainstay in the meta, I don't think. I think he's too weak mm. to be like a main meta champion. Like, he'll see a little bit of play when there's a lot of jungle bans or if it really fits the comp. But uh, he went from a 51% win rate to like a 47, 48% win rate with that one nerf. Which is usually when Hecarim is broken, he's broken in both solo queue and pro play. It's like when he's when he's bad in solo queue, he usually actually isn't that good in, in pro play. So. I wouldn't be surprised if the nerfs just completely killed the horse, unfortunately. Well, it depends Not on unfortunately. Your, fortunately or for, unfortunately. So I actually don't know if we'll actually see any Hecarim, weirdly enough. Then they just got reworked. Hmm. I don't know. We'll see. We'll have to... I, I This is just a total random prediction because his win rate dropped really heavily. Uh, I, but well, I hope he gets played. I put him in my pick <laughs> Oh, shit. <laughs> <laughs> Most banned champion during champs like, maybe I should change it. Hmm. I put mine Yeah, you can still change it. So. Yeah, mine is uh, my most banned. Uh, what did I put? Oh my god, I, I might remember. put Yummy. I, I put Seraphine mm. or Yumi. It was one of the two. 
I think Seraphine's not. Uh, Asian regions literally just haven't touched Seraphine. All world or all of their local regions. So oh, uh, Seraphine. Uh, apparently Seraphine Senna is uh, the one that you know Hundred Thieves played. G two also yeah. stole. I think I think that's gonna be a real bot lane actually that we see from yeah, other teams too. Better than Senna TK. He's actually too slow. Yeah. <laughs> don't think, do I, this to me. It, I think we're gonna see Seraphine Senna. Yeah, it's gonna be that's a so bit of a boring vest. Yeah. Ooh, mid lane. Says okay, you so. Play Senna. <laughs> yeah, <I know. laughs> I'm also yeah. a Seraphine abuser, so you yeah. Know. <laughs> me too. I played Seraphine a lot, actually. <laughs> yeah. Um, I, I there's also this weird thing that nobody wants to build Seraphine support with Moonstone, and I still think that it's like giga broken. Like, yeah, yeah Seraphine sucks. Would... Builds Charlias. Okay. Well, Seraphine support. I actually don't think Moonstone sucks. I don't. I don't know about I don't that one. Moonstone sucks. I, I don't I, think Moonstone sucks. But how I much think Moonstone's pretty gets? good. If you yeah. get, you have like a, you get like what? a, what is it, nine cool. to ten second W cooldown. You just keep spamming that stuff with buff Moonstone. I mean, I don't know. Maybe, maybe, is just yeah, better okay. in like almost every situation. Obviously, like there are situations is... where Moonstone's good, but Moonstone just so nerfed. Yeah, Moonstone so, so really is, is, right, is pretty good. Maybe I don't know. Anyways, I do think support Seraphine with low income is pretty legit. She just needs points in her W, and then she's just the best champion in the game. But in terms of going into a different direction of meta, just like looking at overall comps. Uh, Camille got super massively giga buffed uh, coming into Worlds. Um, and then also, um, all the junglers got nerfed. So, J4 is going to come onto the rise. We already saw a lot of J4 in finals. So, we got Camille, J4. And then, Galio was already seeing some small play. And Chovy is an, and Zhaohu are big Galio players. Mm -hmm. um, we might go into one of those metas where it's actually, like, I mean, this is what FPX did, like, last year. Pretty much, they just try to go full in dive all engage metas, and they don't ever actually work. Wombo combo mm -hmm. stuff, but I still think we'll see it. Camille, J4, Galio, MF, Amumu, all the super AOE Wombo combo stuff. The meta's kind of ripe for it. All these champions are strong right now, um, and all of their opponents got nerfed, kind of. So that might act, I might have literally just predicted a comp we see, right? <laughs> Where it's just like stupid amounts of engage and no regard to the enemy team comp of just. Camille, J4, Galio, MF, Amumu just fucking run in there and blow people up stuff. Um, but all the champions are strong, so I wouldn't be surprised if the meta starts off like that. It never lasts, though. It always dies off towards the end of group stage. We don't, we don't get those Wombo Combo team comps. Because they kind of suck, honestly. So um, that is interesting yeah. as well. Another jungler we will see probably is Nocturne. He got some big buffs. He's very strong in competitive play. Um, another jungler we should see... But I don't think we will. Is our Belveth and Zach? I think that both of them are very, very strong right now. I actually think we'll see a little bit of Belveth from someone like Canyon. But Zach is in a super strong spot. But I don't know if anybody will play him, unfortunately. Ah, uh, Medios will play him. Medios will play him. <laughs> um, <laughs> He's yeah, gonna unretire. Then... <laughs> just for this meta. Yeah, yeah and he thumbs everywhere, meta. man. It's rough out there in the <laughs> yeah. world. And it's an yeah. NA, so. Yeah. Yeah, it's true. Maybe we'll see some Zach. I mean, I think Zach is super busted right now. So uh, I think he should see play, but um, I just listed a lot of champions. I, I, I do think we'll see Belveth, though. I do think that Canyon is going to pull out the Belveth, and he's going to style on us, unfortunately. So <laughs> some, some jungle picks. Some jungle picks right there. All right. Uh, any, other, any, any other, Kevin, Alistair, do you have any more meta thoughts or anything okay oh, mitchell no. did you right, get it all out one. mitchell i do oh, I, was, I, was, I was like mitchell you got any more right. in there okay all ahead. right there's, there's there's like a zero percent chance this champion actually no there's not a zero percent chance because inspired is here but fiddlesticks fiddlesticks has uh ever since his buff and um like post build build that uh, durability patch uh his ulti does just a stupid amount of damage it's actually un unfair how much damage that does it just melts you uh fiddlesticks with glacial augment is really really strong and predator too but i like glacial augment better so i wouldn't be surprised if inspired he played it last year against damon gaming they almost won it was with lucian nami hansama stuff and then you had fiddle sticks so mm. i think that'd be cool if you can see inspired and then uh, i've been playing a ton of fiddle sticks support um because evan shroud is actually a really really strong item into certain comps so if, if the enemy team has like one or two really tanky people evan shroud is like the anti-death dance it like you get twenty thirty you get thirty percent damage reduction. Well you take ten percent increased damage from Evan Shroud. So I think that it's kind of one of the reasons why tank sports are making a comeback is because Evan Shroud is so good. Um 
So fiddle six with average shroud, you're really, really tanky and you do a stupid amount of damage and your CC is really easy. You just click people. So if you want to try it out, it's really stupid. I'm doing it tomorrow, brother. Hit, you just convinced me. <laughs> fiddle six, average shroud. I always play. I always play whatever you guys say is giga busted. <laughs> I he, when I hear giga busted, I'm like, OK playing that yeah. <laughs> this one this one has a bit more in the tank though right because it's it, okay. like you know I, i've okay. been like leblanc support jay yeah, support. Yeah. like that stuff is pretty whatever. this has merit Fiddle you're saying support. no this is real this is legit okay. it's just okay. stupid like with in low coordination <laughs> okay. of times you're just a fiddle six with evan shroud everybody tries to kill you and you don't die because you're actually just a tank but you yeah. do so much damage because your ulti got buffed into oblivion uh, I, I just go Evern Shroud into Zonia's and then my build's done and I'm, I can one shot an ADC and not die. <laughs> yeah, I think I'll try it out. I've been playing a lot of but, uh, Zyra lately and she just, uh, I mean, I'm like going on a tear with that, that champ. Yeah, I don't know, she just, she just does <laughs> a lot of damage. And with Leandri's, oh my gosh, just get about it, man. Yeah. Oftentimes I'm doing most damage in the game. There's just burn all over the place. I don't know if it's just a low elo thing because I, I did hit gold, by the way, but... <laughs> I, hey, look, I'm abusing it until it stops winning because I'm winning like every single game of that sucker. So uh, that's hilarious. Yeah, it's yeah. pretty funny. Like they just that can I don't know. It's it's pretty pretty awesome. All right, well, if you guys want to check out more Champions Q, uh, I did see this Reddit thing. These people came up with uh, it's the the website is called factor.gg slash Champions Q, oh, and they have this uh, whole site where. Literally, right now, I'm looking at it, and they have live games like going on right now with Champions Q. So if you're interested in, in checking them out live as they happen, then definitely give that uh, site a shout. Um, I think they even have a Twitter account that like automatically tweets when there's games starting or whatever, and you can get yep, different perspectives. So that's pretty cool. That's actually a pretty cool tool, I think, especially... You know, for people right like right now was the most perfect time they could have you know made it because of all the regions that are here uh, playing Champs Q. So, anyways, uh, the last bit of news that I had on on the docket was that FlyQuest announced new ownership. Uh, I know this is for a lot of people. This is kind of the org that's not like the top tier orgs. Like, doesn't have they're like the budget org, but they they've been a favorite for a lot of people. You know, just um, making a lot of really nice. Uh, strides you know and like environment stuff and like there, there's hardly any drama ever going there the ceo is really nice before um and so now they have new ownership first we lose trisha now we have new owners uh i think uh, some of the sentiment right now is like please hold on to the values that made you you because they were so likable uh so what are your thoughts on the ownership uh, i don't know much about the the company that that bought them i know they own some kind of sports uh thing they're kind of a florida panthers event. Yeah, yeah, that's it, Panther. So, um, yeah, so uh, talk talk on them. Talk about the whole change. Yeah, I don't know. What do you guys think? Um, yeah, no. I mean, in my mind, how it goes is like, right now, economy is slowing down, and there's a lot of like companies are going through hard times. So, like, if I think it's good news if a team is willing or an org is willing to buy one of our like likable organizations, right? In terms of buy or at least instate like a CEO, or whatever. Um, luckily, since Trisha has already left and there was already just like a fresh CEO in place, like we don't really have that much attachment to them one way mm -hmm. or another. Like, I don't really know what good decisions they've made or not. So this is fine. This is an okay time to do it. If they were doing this and replacing Trisha and it was not of her own volition, then I would be a lot more hesitant, right? Right. But I think this is fine. This is good news for them that they're getting hopefully new funding. The only thing about the Florida Panthers, I come from Michigan, so we have the Detroit Red Wings and like I've. <laughs> <laughs> I've never really Sorry. seen any uh, performance from them one way or another, but you know I don't follow hockey that closely, so maybe I'm seeing complete blasphemy and they're a good team. But mm. don't have to be. A good Let team me to be tell a you or... about hockey now, Jay. <laughs> <laughs> the, the, Cana <laughs> the Canadian here. <laughs> okay. Canadians out here. Yeah, I don't have much opinions about them. I don't yeah. know. I don't know anything about them. I just saw that it got changed. Uh, if FlyQuest starts being crazy or doing stupid stuff, I'm gonna call them Florida Quest. That's about all I got. Yeah. <laughs> Lord, good one, Mitchell. That was almost Thank a you. dad joke. <laughs> I think that was almost yep. a dad joke. I like it. Uh, <laughs> Alistair, any thoughts on that? No, not really, honestly. Right. Yeah, okay. I mean, like I said, it's just more of an announcement, but uh, I know that people love that org. I like that org. I hope that they continue to do good things, and hopefully it's a good direction for them. Maybe they'll actually like be able to keep players and actually make solid rosters and build off of that. I mean, they have solid rosters, but I'm hoping that – this just kind of propels in the next level. Uh, any final thoughts? Yeah. You guys have any final uh, items you yeah. wanted to discuss before game start? I'm, 
I was glad that I heard in some talk shows, like especially with some pros or whatever, talking to they're like, oh, the um, the Asian players are not going to touch champs to you, whatever. There will be ping or where different some areas might just be bad or mm -hmm. they don't want to be on comms or whatever. You see, like whole teams just go on champs to you. I'm like, what are you guys talking about? Yeah. Um, so whether or not like they had a reason to believe it or not, I'm just glad that the end result is that so far it looks like uh, DRX T1. I don't know about the Chinese teams, but like some teams are starting to touch champs too, and hopefully it's a snowballing effect. Because like for the love of God, we we need this to carry momentum to next year. Like if NA gets anything out of it, I hope they get good champs queue practice. Hopefully, right? Yeah. And if they do, then maybe they'll have a reason to play it next year. Because this, uh, my sad take is that I don't think champs queue is surviving until the next world at, at NA. So this is a very rare moment Ooh. to be on comms and like have some of the highest level games NA server has ever seen. That's yeah, the thing. I hope to last. that chance Q lasts. It's a, it's this is an important time for NA. Actually, like really important. Like they made Champs Q because Worlds is happening in NA this year. Mm -hmm. Um, so yeah, it has to carry through. People have to play it. People have to like, you know, we have casters like supporting it by casting games. Uh, Azale, Captain Flowers, Kobe, and stuff streaming it. Um, uh, other prolific streamers are playing it right other prolific streamers are watching other people's streams and just spectating so it needs to keep going it needs to be a thing um if anybody's watched double lift he's actually been getting completely crapped on <laughs> ah. i mean he's been he's been winning some games too but he's also been getting yeah. crapped on um uh, he had a um okay this is kind of off topic but uh he had a little conversation with cage that got clipped that i watched Mm, and Cajal straight up asked, "Hey, are you uh, are you coming back? The fans want to know." And Doublelift was like, "I mean, knowing Doublelift, and he has literally no poker face. He was like, ah, oh, you know, I cannot tell. I can't can't say for certain. You know, can't <laughs> confirm or deny." And I'm just like, "Oh my God, is it happening? Is he? I'm meeting? not believing is he anything. I'm not believing is, nothing. You're not believing. I'm a, I'm note. a little." bit of a believer yeah As I just don't man, there's down. there's a world though because he said i'm not in it for the salary i'm like i'm not gonna ask for like a big salary or anything because like i'm not yeah, trying exactly. to be greedy i don't care about that i have my own individual sponsors so, like i'm okay with taking a mod salary i'm like team liquid's looking oh like my god <laughs> they're trying to double down steve said they're trying to double down on what made them good in the past Ooh, only one double player down? that the narrative Double down. I mean, so, he also literally said double check your DMs, like, as a yeah, meme. Yeah, so, like, you know, like, mm. is double lift, is TL double lift back with Core JJ and Bjergsen? Bjergsen. And, I mean, he oh also, Steve God. also said they were trying to go in a new direction of, like, get that, not hey, going to the old, old days. Maybe a new just direction. a different direction from the one they were on before. Yeah, a new direction <laughs> is... They're picking up all the retired players. All right. <laughs> I, I don't know. Any talent is a new direction from all imports. Think about it. True. Hansama is very different from double lifts. One Look, I'm not against it. I, I want this to happen. <laughs> I'll be so happy if it does. I just think it's funny because I really think Steve was like saying like we're going to have like new. I thought the message was we're getting new talent, kind of fresh direction, build up the roster instead of just going on these yeah. old, reliable, known names. I haven't but. seen double lift play in a professional game in like two years so i mean that seems yeah he's unique. basically a new player <laughs> okay he is a new All player right. sir yeah okay streamer double, double, double lift streamer double lift <laughs> yeah unprecedented oh, 30 year old streamer what if <laughs> probably not happening but if it does oh goodness. what if he came Don't back and hope. what if he came back and changed his name to triple lift and then just dumpstered on everybody oh that would that be, would, that'd be, that'd be the worst thing for his brand possible to i know he has to change it everything it would be awesome it yeah. would be hilarious it would be memed into oblivion it would it would permeate north american memeology for centuries yeah. I, I want it to really happen. Good Chinese player Wayless, who changed his name to Godvi, and then got called Gold Five, <laughs> and then he changed his name to Pain Pain Evil, so he became Plat Evil at the next turn. Like, oh, don't change your name, guys. Your name is your brand, okay? Like, do it once, but don't do it often. Well, you look, I, I just, I mean, stuff. this this has no merit or doesn't even mean anything. But I would say that in Doublelift's position, if he did come back as Triple Lift and made it successful, I would say that he'd actually 
may be you know it would help his brand because not only could he still merch out double lift but now he could do triple lift and it's like oh you know double lift is more like vintage collectible i had the stuff yeah, before have it was to triple lift. Axe this one big dad yeah. come on man like a terrible idea Dude, <laughs> triple you, lift it's triple it lift, sounds bro. so bad he's got it it does it's not roll happen. off the tongue <laughs> it's, it's the, the same syllable no, 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 no. he, he changes at a low price right I'm just yeah saying. exactly nah, he, he changes his name to lift squared Oh lift my squared. God. Now that doesn't roll off the lift. tongue. Lift, <laughs> lift, 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 lift. What if he's just lift, lift? Lift, <laughs> lift. Oh my Do you guys God. know what double okay. lift is? What it's from? It's a, it's a card magic trick. It's where you do, like, if you're trying to oh, do a yes. card trick. Oh, yes. Yeah, you're right. You're, I have yeah, heard you, it. You do, like, a double lift to, like, uh, okay. it's like a double fake or something. Yep. Yeah. So it, it has an actual meaning. Um, triple lift, I think, is just made up. And lift oh, I definitely, definitely made, made it up. up. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. That's a, definitely made it up. Just saying. If it happens, you heard it here first. I've got a lot of predictions. I got a lot of predictions and things that I just threw out there in the sphere just in case. You never know because then hey, I can go back. It doesn't matter, man. Like, if it works out, you take credit. If it doesn't work out, you just say you were joking. It's I fine. I was joking. That's right. We'll do it's that amazing. all the time. <laughs> Heck yeah. I love it. We hit a lot more than we missed, though. So, you know, I'm okay with that. True. I'm okay. We do. Yeah. We do hit a lot. <laughs> yep. All right. Fly uh, quest, baby. Fly quest. Let's go. <laughs> any any other final thoughts? You guys good? All right. World starts. Oh, oh, uh, oh there he goes. Wait. We do this every year. We okay. didn't do it yet. We did. We it. have to predict who's winning the world championship oh, 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 right oh. now. We, we do that every right year. Now, right. I, I predicted it before. Uh, let's see if I can predict. I think I predicted it twice because that one year when Dan won one, it was really obvious. Uh, <laughs> mm, let me think. Uh, so who is winning the entire title? All right, let's go over a couple of the favorites. Gen yep. G is the Korean number one seed, big favorite. Uh, JDG is the LPL one seed, mm -hmm. big favorite. Top Esports, LPL second seed. When you get to the LPL, right, almost every game was a five-game series. So mm. when you think about the differences between JDG and Top Esports, right, not a lot. They could play another best of five, and Top Esports might win instead of JDG, right? Right, right. When it's that close. Um, so... Who's and then I didn't list any other regions teams because uh, you know. I'm just so, gonna tell uh, who's you. I'm just, the... I'm just gonna tell you who I want to win, and that's T1 always. I want Faker okay. to win. All right. I just T1. I don't think it'll happen, but that's who I'm going for. I don't care. That's that's my team. T1. T1 second seed. Yeah. Uh, I'm sick. Of... Oh, go ahead. Go no, ahead. go ahead. Go ahead. Okay. I'm sick of no, no, every go goddamn turn. No, no, no. Go ahead, like Mitchell. <laughs> no, 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 no. Go ahead. No, no, no. Go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> After you, my leash. Okay, go ahead. <laughs> I'm just sick of every goddamn tournament for the last like four years just being like a Korean favorite and, yeah. like, monster team coming in. Like the one uh, yeah. time that didn't happen was FPX coming in. Everyone thought FPX mm -hmm. was winning that year. Um, yeah, that's true. And I'm oh, just sick of that too. shit. Huh? Yeah. Everyone thought Gambit was like gonna a win top two, but win. like usually the the yeah. Korean team is just like, oh, they gotta win. And I'm like, mm -hmm. what have they done to deserve this credit? They're like, like. T1 guy got like kind of embarrassed, honestly, at MSI. And then like, oh, they're like, oh, I guess the next number one seed from Korea is gonna be the favorite to win. I'm like, what, what the shit? So I think it's gonna be top esports. I don't think it's a question of like first or second seed in China who wins. It's just the one that you don't expect to win will win. Mm -hmm. yeah. I, I'm in the same Maybe. boat. I was also gonna say top, so nice. interesting. Interesting. Okay. I uh I'm Mitchell? going GDG. Okay. Yeah, I'm going JDG. I think uh, I watched the finals and I thought that JDG was absolutely freaking cracked. They're so goddamn good. I mean, so does Top Esports. Top Art Esports is really insane. But one thing that I cannot let go is that Jackie Love just goes full on tactical mode, dude. He that guy malfights himself in <laughs> yeah. like it's freaking breakfast, he, man. He, he just did does it all the time. They won he did That's it. That's true. They did, but uh, they didn't have the Shia rookie, and then. JDG, and it's just um, I have a tradition of predicting the freaking first seed of LPL, and it just works out pretty well. FBX did it, EDG did it, Damon Gaming unfortunately did take it that one year, and I I think we all predicted Damon Gaming to win, and they did, but whatever. I'm predicting first seed for LPL once again. JDG is gonna win the whole thing. All right, there it is. It's all in right, the here books. We are. It's in the How's sphere. It? There's our predictions. Man. Okay. So we all know, right? League Dead already lost. Like. <laughs> <laughs> but what if Everyone's I don't? Not winning this thing. But what if I don't? And what if triple lift comes next year? So double oh win. My god, dude. Oh my dude, god, dude. Dude, team <laughs> might not even make it out of groups, dude. It's Kumiyushi versus Berserker and Viper. I mean, he might even be the worst ADC yeah. of those bunch. Part of 
Hey, you you were talking to a North American fan here. I have the most hopium there is ever. I if I can hope that an NA team is gonna win worlds, T1 is not a stretch for me. T1's True. not a stretch. I mean, so. we have to remember Leaf Dead is a TSM fan. Right? <laughs> exactly. Yeah. See? We'll believe anything. TSM we'll believe in anything. Are very <laughs> sound of mind. Yeah. Yes. That's right. All right. <laughs> let's wrap up this episode before TSM fans start uh, hating on us. <laughs> okay. That's going to do it. Uh, I just want to thank my co host once again, Kevin Mitchell Allister, for always sharing their wise insight. World starts. I hope everyone is hype. Uh, starts this Thursday. So hopefully you guys can catch it. And we're going to see it in normal hours. Thank goodness. Uh, but until next time, enjoy your climb on the rift. Try not to be too toxic. And we'll see you all in the next episode. Peace. <laughs>